Well, we've had an amazing item from our kids and young people. How about, look, this is going to show the age of some of us. And if you've ever worked in kids' ministry, you're helped out at a CFC kids camp. Who knows the Joshua for the Battle of Jericho song? Oh, come on. Who knows the Joshua for the Battle of Jericho song? Right, we're going to sing it. Ready? Joshua for the Battle of Louder. Jericho, Jericho, Joshua fought. And what happened? And the walls came. To... Okay, first verse, you can talk about it. You can talk about a man named Gideon. Talk about the man of Saul. You, there's none like good old Joshua and the... Okay, now we need it really loud. Hey, three, four, Joshua and the battle of... Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Joshua won the battle of Jericho and the walls came. Yes, give the grown-ups a round of applause. And you might be thinking, no, I've never heard of that one. Well, look, you can sing it later in the car. That's okay. But this true story of God showing how big and mighty His power is, to work on his people's behalf actually happened. Do you know, God did an amazing miracle, a huge impenetrable. Kids, can you say impenetrable? Impenetrable, that's right. Impenetrable, it actually means it's impossible to pass through. It's impossible to enter. A huge impenetrable fortress that guarded a city was flattened without them even throwing a spear Climbing a wall, firing an arrow, or having to draw their swords. That is amazing. But when Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down, it wasn't because of the type of fighting that you or I might think. And Laura talked about that a bit. And you know, you've heard your parents say, kids, don't fight. Well, the type of fighting I'm talking about is not fighting kids and people with your hands or with a weapon. The type of fighting that they did The Bible talks about it. Let's have a look in Hebrews 11, chapter 11, verse 30. It says, By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By what? You can participate. By what? That's right, by faith. Joshua and the army fought the battle of Jericho by faith. It was a faith fight. And do you know you're allowed to have faith fights? God talks about it. They're all in the Bible. Like Laura said, if Jesus has become our forever friend and we've invited him into our life and we know him personally, we're also meant to play our part in the fight of faith. And kids, you definitely can be part of God's army. It's not just for grown-ups. The Apostle Paul, who hated Christians and then after a powerful encounter with the risen Jesus, became one of his followers, wrote about this faith fight in one of the letters to uh, his friend called Timothy. He said, I have fought the good fight. Do you know there's a good fight? There's a good fight. A good fight is about God's church, his army, going into battle to see God's kingdom break out in people's lives, to see Jesus' love shine in even the darkest places and God's miraculous answers come through in amazing ways to help people. Kids and young people, you're part of Jesus' army. You're part of his church going into battle. You don't have to wait until you grow up. In Ephesians 6.12, Paul also wrote about the good fight. In some of the letters he wrote to some churches, he said in Ephesians 6.12, he said, our fight is not against human beings. It's against the rulers, the authorities and the powers of this dark world. It is against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly world. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he said, I do live in the world, but I don't fight my battles the way the people of the world do. The weapons I fight with are not the weapons that the world uses. In fact, it's just the opposite. My weapons have the power of God 
to destroy the camps of the enemy. That's pretty cool, to destroy the camps of the enemy. Do you know, Jesus, our commander, has given us his special armour, his special armour. And you can read it about it in Ephesians chapter 6. Parents and kids, you might want to read about that as you go home today or this week. But he's given us his special armour. There's a belt of truth. So holding on to God's truth and what he says so we can run and we can keep going forward in battle. There's a breastplate, something that protects your chest because that's where your heart is. A breastplate, it talks about a breastplate of righteousness or God's A plus perfect record that he gave Jesus gets given to you. That's pretty cool. There's some sandals. They're not physical things. They're spiritual armour that Jesus has given us. Some sandals. This readiness, this desire to want to tell people about Jesus. Putting on the sandals. There's a helmet and there's a shield. And I'll talk about a couple of the others. But the helmet. Do you imagine if you... uh, if a bike helmet protects your head, when you, put, you know how you have to wear a helmet when you go for a ride on your bike or on your scooter? It protects your head because if you fell down and banged your head, that wouldn't be very good. It could be really dangerous. It could affect even, could, you know, it could kill you. It's important to wear your bike helmet. But our spiritual helmet is the salvation that Jesus has already won for us. If we've asked him to be our forever friend, nothing and no one can stop him from being our forever friend and from living inside of us. Kids, do you know that? Jesus has given you his spiritual armor. If you know him, then that will never, he will never ever leave you. That's pretty awesome. You belong to him no matter what, no, no matter how many times you make a mistake, no matter what happens to you. And when, because you belong to him, when your time on this earth finishes, you're going to go and be with him forever. In heaven. That's a great piece of spiritual armour that God's given us, right? And he's also given us the sword, a spiritual sword. So it's called the sword of the spirit. Do you know what a spiritual sword is? It's God's words in the Bible. A spiritual sword. When we pray and sing, like Laura said, when we speak out God's word, when we choose to believe it, it like it cuts through lies and things that are trying to get us off track from God. He's also given us the ability of the Holy Spirit in our life as we pray to him, as we talk with him, as we pray prayers. That's a, that's a spiritual weapon. So how do we use them? <laughs> well, we thank Jesus, firstly, that he's given us his spiritual weapons and then we rely on them to fight the good fight of faith. We rely on them. And the more we keep growing in knowing what Jesus is like, what he's done for us and what he says he will do, we learn to trust him more and more. That's what faith is. The faith is actually knowing what God is like, knowing what he's done for us in sending Jesus to the cross and knowing what he says in the Bible about what he's going to do and putting our trust, really trusting that, putting the full weight of our trust, sitting down on that, believing it, trusting it. And so to demonstrate that, I want a very special person to come up here, my husband, Michael. (laughs) He's thrilled about this. No, (laughs) come on up. And Nick, you're going to help us? All right. Now, he really loves Jesus. That's why he's standing here, people, just letting you know. All right, so do do you trust me? Mostly. No, we need a more of a secure answer than that. Do you trust me? Uh, yes, yes. Good, very good. Okay, Nick, can you please blindfold Michael? All right, Nick's going to be his helper today. All right, just come forward a little bit. And I'm going to be your guide. I'm going to direct you. Just stand there. That's good. Nick, you need to hold on to his arm and so that it doesn't fall down. Good. All right, I'm going to give you some instructions, okay? And Nick's going to be your helper. So he's going to hold on to your arm, aren't you, Nick? Good, all right. I want you to turn to your right and walk three steps. Okay, I want you to stop and turn around. And I want you to walk two steps towards me. Stop. I want you to turn around two times. All right, I want you to walk one more step. Do a side step. That's it, another tiny little side step. All right, 
back a tiny little bit. Perfect. Okay, I want you to sit down. <laughs> How good was that? You all right? Yeah, I think I did. He had to trust that there was going to be something there to catch him when he sat down, right? He had to show faith and trust that I was going to not lead him up the garden path and do something silly. Thank you. Put your hands together for Michael. <laughs> okay, and there was a helper helping him. That's like the Holy Spirit, right? Helping him, saying, go this way. No, no, this way, this way, helping him because he couldn't see with his eyes. And then finally, when I gave the instruction or said, can you sit down? He had to sit. That's what faith is like, right? Because Jesus is our commander and he gives us his instruction. He gives us his word. He gives us directions. And so when God told Joshua to command the people to march around Jericho, he said, don't even talk, don't even whisper. Can you imagine all those kids not whispering? Wow. (laughs) Don't even raise your voice until Joshua gave them the command to shout. You know what he was asking them to do? He was asking them to release their faith, to trust him, to stake their future on that what he was like, what he'd done for them in even leading them across the River Jordan and rescuing them out of Egypt, and also what he was going to do. They had to sit down on his promises and trust him. Let's have a look. It says in Joshua 6, verse 1 to 5, The gates of Jericho were shut, shut tight and guarded closely because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one went in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, I've handed Jericho over to you. I've also handed over to you its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all your fighting men. In fact, do it for six days. Have seven priests get trumpets made out of ram's horns and they must carry them in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times. Tell the priests to blow the trumpets as you march. You'll hear them blow a long blast on the trumpets. And when you do, tell the whole army to give a loud shout. The wall of the city will fall down. Then the whole army will march up to the city and everyone will go straight in. And do you know, the reason I think God got them to march around was he was preparing their faith. He was actually preparing their faith. What do you think they talked about? Once a day they did it, then they went home and they're preparing their meals, getting ready for the next day. I reckon in their, you know, tents and their spaces, they're talking about, come on, we've got to trust God. He's going to do this. He said he would. Look what he's done in the past. Remember what he's like. Look what he's going to do in the future. And as they started to talk about that, faith would start to rise. And Jesus, I believe God got them to a point where... You know, after that time, they were so full of faith that when they shouted, there was faith connected to that shout. It wasn't the shout, it was the faith that was connected to that shout. It was a point of contact for their faith, a release of it. God moved with power. It's awesome. Can we play that clip of the sound of the horn? Because when we say trumpets, they didn't have trumpets like Commander Jess, thank you Jess, played over here. They had ram's horns. Have you ever heard what a ram's horn sounds like? Have a listen to this. This is over a street in Adelaide, a musician playing it out the window. And the people on the street are like, what the? That's amazing, right? And that sound, those ram's horns, were used in Israel worship as either a call to repentance or a call to war. You imagine seven of those babies going really strong as they're walking around the world. It was a call to war. It was a call to fight the good fight of faith. Pretty amazing. I reckon the people in Jericho would have wondered what on earth they're doing, don't you? A little bit looked a bit stupid. What are these guys doing? Like, there's just trumpets. Like, who do you think you are? Like, we're in a city that can't be destroyed. 
we, we've got a wall around us. <laughs> but by faith, the walls of Jericho fell because they believed God would do it before they saw it happen with their own eyes. What about you and me? Are there walls that God wants to flatten or problems we're facing or things that aren't shifting in our own lives or the lives of the people around us where God, our way maker, wants to work powerfully? Yes, there is. The scriptures are full of his promises to do just that. And so I believe the Lord is calling all of us together no one left behind and no one left by themselves to engage and keep on engaging and keep on persisting in the good fight of faith. There are no shortcuts to spiritual breakthrough in the kingdom of God. The biblical pattern is always earnest and heartfelt prayer, faith and obedience. Always. Are you fighting the good fight of faith? If yes, then today's message is an encouragement. Keep going. Don't give up. God is at work. Don't give up believing for God to move powerfully in your life, in the life of your friends and family. Don't give up. Don't give up believing for your extended family, your work colleagues, your friends at school, at uni. Don't quit looking to Jesus to see a spiritual breakthrough in their lives. That they might too know Jesus and experience His presence and power in amazing ways. Are you fighting the good fight of faith? If you're not sure, today's message, hear me, today's message is a rally cry from your commander. It's time to engage in the battle or time to re-engage in the battle. It's time to re-engage in the battle that rages for the hearts and minds of people everywhere to know him. And it's especially raging for the hearts and minds of children and young people. As I was reflecting on this message, I was thinking about the early church and I was thinking about the, those characteristics that distinguished the early church very clearly because the Spirit of God was at work among them. It was unity, there was powerful preaching, there was extravagant generosity, you know, there was um, signs and wonders happening, there was devotion and worship and a hunger for God's presence. But the thing I kept thinking about as I was preparing this message was the distinguishing factor of boldness. Boldness. There was boldness among them. It was so clear and so obvious. Do you have God's boldness operating in your life? And if you don't, you can't muster it up on your own. You need the Holy Spirit's help. <laughs> we need to be filled and refilled with the Holy Spirit. You know, C.S. Lewis said a quote that says, In such a fearful world, we need a fearless church. In such a fearful world, we need a fearless church. And fearless doesn't mean that you're never afraid. Fearless means you have mastery over fear. It means fear will not inhibit you, inhibit you. It would not intimidate you. It will not stop you. In fact, in Jesus' name, you take authority over that fear and you keep moving forward. We need the Holy Spirit's boldness to witness about the risen Christ. A church that is not afraid to engage in the battle to see walls come down and people open up their hearts and minds and lives to Jesus. Do you know, as we were praying through the theme of this, what this message will be in the final week of our Waymaker series, our teaching team settled on three words, which in hindsight I think are a prophetic or God-inspired declaration, not just over some areas in our own lives, but in our community in the future communities, both here in Australia and even overseas, where the Christian Family Centre churches will, will start new churches and new people helping ministries. In the lives of people that we love who don't yet know Jesus. And the three, walls are, the three words are, walls come down. Walls come down. Is that wishful thinking? No way. In Joshua 6.1, it says the gates of Jericho were shut tight and guarded closely because of the Israelites, because of the report of what God had done going before them. No one went in and no one went out. Well, no one went out, no one went in, but the walls came down. And I felt this so strongly this week as I was preparing to remind us this morning that no enemy, no enemy can stop God's power breaking in. No enemy can stop God's power breaking in. The people of Jericho shouted at Joshua's command. And do you know what Jesus cried out on the cross? It is finished. 
With a loud cry, he breathed his last and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom saying, there's no longer any barrier between me between God and humanity. There's no longer needs to be this separation. You can come near, you can draw close, you can have relationship with God because He's done everything necessary. He's forgiven our sins. He died on the cross for them. In Colossians 2.15, it says, Christ took away the weapons of the powers and authorities. He made a public show of them. He won the battle over them by dying on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No enemy can stop God's power breaking into people's lives. It was by faith that the walls of Jericho fell down. By faith, after the army had marched around them for seven days. So what if, what if in the next 14 days, before we start the What on Earth Am I Here For campaign, every day, you can choose 14 minutes, you can choose four minutes, doesn't matter. Every day for the next 14 days, you prayed with faith. Every day. What if you got together with your small group and not just to hand out resources, but you got together and you prayed and said, Lord, we're believing for walls to come down in people's lives that we are praying for in Jesus' name. What happens if you got a prayer partner and you said, we're going to pray, we're going to FaceTime each other, we're going to WhatsApp each other, and we're going to pray for this thing. We want to see this king hit. We want to see spiritual breakthrough happen in this area because walls come down. What if when you get together for your creative ministries rehearsals, for your youth team meetings, for your kids team meetings before, for breakout, you prayed and you prayed with faith and you said, walls come down as we preach Jesus, as we come with a heart to serve and love and give, walls come down. No enemy can stop God's power breaking in. Do you know, he wants us to king hit some walls in Jesus' name. No wall can stop God's power break. No enemy can stop God's power breaking. No wall can keep God's loving kindness out. There was a lady called Rahab, the one person that was rescued from the city of Jericho. She'd done some bad things in her life. But by faith, she put a red cord out her window. And there's a red cord that runs throughout Scripture that points to the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. And she put it out her window because she believed in faith that the God of heaven and earth that she'd heard about could come in kindness and rescue her. And so the walls fell down, but her house wasn't destroyed. And she'd got her friends, her brothers, her sister, her father, her mother, her family, and she said, come into this house and you'll be safe. God's kindness. These walls couldn't keep God's kindness out. Isn't that beautiful? As we put our faith in the blood of Jesus and what he's done for us, that there's no one beyond the reach of his saving grace. As we pray with faith in Jesus' name, his kindness can break into even the darkest situations. Do we believe that? The next 14 days, what could God do preparing us for a real move of the Holy Spirit in people's lives, in our community, in our friendships, in our family. What could God do? Will you engage in the battle? Why don't we pray together? Lord, I thank you for this amazing story, this true story of what you did how you went before the Israelites, the people of God, but also how you spoke to them. You gave them a promise that they could stake their lives on. You showed them what you're like. You showed them what you'd done in the past. You showed them how you were leading them into their future. And you wanted them to release their faith. And so what seems crazy to us, but you said march around the city because you're saying, do you know what? This battle is not going to be won by you going in with the spears and the swords or in your own strength. This battle is going to be won by you trusting in me, by you reaching out to me for the power that is readily available, for the grace and the kindness that is ready to reach into those situations, uh, those, those dark situations that need the hope of Christ to rise 
in people's lives. And Lord, we know that people put up walls, that we sometimes put up walls, but Jesus, your love and your kindness can penetrate the strongest wall that we put up. Because when we see that red, that scarlet cord that runs throughout Scripture, your blood shed for us, when we see and we put our trust in what you did on that cross, Lord, we know that we, we are assured eternal salvation. We are assured that you'll come into our life. We are assured a relationship with you. And that's what we long for for so many people. Lord, so many people around this church walls. Lord, so many people in our own individual lives who don't know you yet. Lord, we long to see them come to know Christ. And so would you do a work in us? Holy Spirit, before you do a work through us, would you do a work in us and inspire us to pray, to reach out to you in faith, in Jesus' name. And while we're just still in this attitude of prayer, if you're here and you've never put your trust in what Jesus did for you, the blood of Jesus that was shed for you, right now, you can just reach out and receive him into your life. Say, Jesus, in your heart, Jesus, I believe in you. <laughs> Jesus, I put my trust in you. Jesus, I want to know you forever and I thank you that you did everything necessary to remove the barrier between me and you. Come into my life by the power of your Holy Spirit. I want to follow you, Jesus. I want to experience your love and your power. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, Jesus has, not will, has, 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 has come into your life by the power of his Holy Spirit. He's come to live in you and you're now a Christian. And we want to help you know what that looks like as a next step of following him. So I'd love you to come and see me at the end of the service or to write it on your care card or tell someone that you came with, I want to follow Jesus. Today was the day I decided, come into my life. Can we stand together?